Hi everyone! So I am back reading some more of the Enchanted Wood. I'm sorry it's been a while since I did the next chapter of this, but there are various reasons why I couldn't do it. So, um, we're going to crack on. I think the last chapter, the children went down the slippery slip from Moonface's house for the first time. Um, but they need to take him some toffee to say thank you and hopefully to let him let them use it again. And you can probably see Coco's going to listen to the story. She's asleep over there. And India's doing her schoolwork today with me, aren't you? Yes. Come and say hello, India. <laughs> I think you've all met her before. So Hi, say. everyone. <laughs> okay, so this next chapter is called Bessie Makes Some Toffee for Moonface. The children talked about nothing else but the magic faraway tree and its queer folk for days after their adventure. Bessie said they must certainly keep their promise to take toffee to Moonface. Promises must never be broken, she said. I will make some toffee if Mother will let me have some treacle. Then, when it's done, you can take it to Moonface, Joe. Mother said that they could make toffee on Wednesday when the grocer came and bought their goods. So on Wednesday, Bessie set to work making the best toffee she could. She set it in a pan on the stove. It cooked beautifully. When it had cooled and was nice and set hard, Bessie broke it into small pieces. She put them into a paper bag, gave one piece to each of the others and popped one in her mouth. I'll have to go at night, I think, said Jo. I shan't get any time off this week, I know. We're so busy with the garden now. So that night, when the moon was shining brightly in the sky overhead, Jo slipped out of bed. Bessie and Fanny woke up and heard him. They hadn't meant to go with him, but when they saw the moonlight shining everywhere and thought of that exciting faraway tree, they felt that they simply couldn't stay behind. Wouldn't you have felt that too? They dressed quickly and whispered through Joe's door. We're coming too, Joe. Wait for us. Joe waited. Then all three slipped down the creaky stairs and out into the moonlit garden. The shadows were very black indeed, just like ink. There was no colour anywhere, only just the pale, cold moonlight. They were soon in the enchanted wood. But dear me, it was quite different at night. It was simply alive with people and animals. In the very dark parts of the wood, little lanterns were hung in rows. In the moonlit parts, there were no lanterns and a great deal of chattering was going on. If you can see this beautiful scene, let me move that round a little bit, of all the fairies chatting and dancing in the enchanted wood under the moonlight. And you can see here the yummy pan of toffee that Bessie has made for Moonface. What a beautiful picture. So let's see what happens. Nobody took any notice of the children at all. Nobody seemed even surprised to see them there, but the children were most astonished at everything. There's a market over there, whispered Joe to Bessie. Look, there are necklaces made of painted acorns and brooches made of wild roses. But Bessie was looking at something else, a dance going on in the moonlit dell with fairies and pixies chattering and laughing together. Sometimes when they were tired of dancing on their feet, partners would fly in the air and dance there in the moonlight. Fanny was watching some elves growing toadstools. As fast as the toadstools grew, an elf laid a cloth on it and put glasses of lemonade and tiny biscuits there. It was all like a strange dream. Oh, I am glad we came, said Bessie in delight. Who would have thought that the enchanted wood would be like this at night? They wasted a great deal of time looking at everything, but at last they got to the faraway tree. And even here there was a great difference. Um, oh, sorry. The whole tree was hung with fairy lights and glittered softly from branch to branch, rather like a very enormous Christmas tree. Jo saw something else. It was a stout rope going from branch to branch for people to hold on to when they wished to go up the tree. Look at that, he said. It will be much easier to go up tonight. All we have to do is just hold on to the rope and pull ourselves up it. Come on, girls. Other folk and some animals too were going up the tree, not to the land at the top, but to visit their friends who lived in the trunk of the enormous old tree. All the doors and windows were open now, and there was a great deal of laughing and talking going on. The children climbed up and up. When they came to the window of the pixie who had been so angry with them last week because they peeped in, they found that he was in a very good temper now, sitting smiling at his open window talking to three owls. But Joe didn't think they'd better stop in case the pixie remembered them and threw water over them again. So on they went, holding onto the thick rope, climbing very easily. They came to Silky's house and called her. She was baking over her stove. 
Hello, she said, looking up and smiling. So here you are again, just in time too, because I'm baking pot biscuits and they are most delicious when hot. Her silky golden hair stood out round her tiny face, which was red with baking. Joe shook out his bag of toffees. We're really taking them to Moonface, he said, but do have one. Silky took one and then gave them three hot pot biscuits each. My goodness, how lovely they were, especially when the pop, they popped inside the children's mouths. We mustn't stop, Silky dear, said Bessie. We still have a long way to go up the tree. Well, look out for Mother Washalot's washing water again then, said Silky. She's dreadful at night. She knows there are a lot of people up and down the tree and she just loves to soak them with her dirty water. The children went on up. They passed Mr. Watts's name, still fast asleep and snoring in his chair, and dodged quickly behind a branch when they heard Dame Washalot's water sloshing down. Nobody even got splashed this time. Fanny laughed. This really is the funniest tree I ever knew, she said. You simply never know what's going to happen. They pulled themselves up and up by the rope and at last came to the top. They knocked on Moonface's yellow door. Come in, yelled a voice, and they went in. Did you bring me that toffee you owe me? Yes, said Joe, handing him the bag. There's a lot there, Moonface. Half to pay you for last week's slippery slide, and half to pay you if your letters go down again tonight. Oh my, said Moonface, looking with great delight into the bag. What lovely toffee. He crammed four large pieces into his mouth and sucked with joy. Is it nice, said Bessie. Oh, blue, blue, blue answered Moonface, quite unable to speak properly, for his teeth were all stuck together with the toffee. The children laughed. Is the roundabout land at the top of the faraway tree, asked Joe. Moonface shook his head. Oobble, he said. What land is there now, asked Fanny. Moonface made a face and screwed up his nose. Oobble, 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 he said very earnestly. Oh dear, we shan't be able to get anything out of him with all that toffee in his mouth, said Bessie. He'll just oobble away. What a pity. I would have liked to know what strange land is there tonight. I'll just go and peep, said Joe, jumping up. Moonface looked alarmed. He shook his head and caught hold of Joe. Oobble, 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 he cried. It's all right, Moonface. I'm only going to peep, said Joe. I shan't go into the land. Oobble, 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 cried Moonface in a fright, trying his best to swallow all the toffee so that he could speak properly. Oobble. Joe didn't listen. He went out of the door with the girls and climbed up the last branch of the faraway tree. What strange land was above it this time? Joe peered up through the dark hole in the cloud through which a beam of moonlight shone down. And here is Moonface with his mouth so full of toffee that all he can say is oobble oobble oobble. And he can't speak so Joe doesn't know why he's so worried about him going to peek in the land. Joe came to the little ladder that ran up the hole in the cloud. He climbed up it. His head poked out into the land at the top. He gave a shout. Bessie, Fanny, it's the land of ice and snow. There are big white bears everywhere. Oh, do come and look. Come back, Joe, come back, yelled Moonface, swallowing all his toffee in his fright. You mustn't even look or the snowman will get you. But Joe was gone. Bessie looked at Moonface in dismay. What shall we do? She said. Tomorrow we will find out what has happened to Joe. See you soon.